I live in Maryland, Wyoming, a small village in the Rocky Mountains, founded by my grandpa John and three of his friends, Charles, Alex, and Frank. Our mountain is covered in trees, so many that our village is impossible to see from the ground, and we've actually had a few hikers get lost and stumble upon us. We've been living up here since I was six. We just got internet up here four years ago and I was gifted a smartphone for my 15th birthday. We aren't some kind of cult or anything, as in we don't have fanatical religious beliefs or perform ritualistic sacrifices. Our families just realized that there was much more freedom to have up here than there was in the town of Clare. We thrive by selling small and large game to the butcher in Clare, who is always low on meat and trees to the woodworkers. It isn't much, but it keeps the electricity here, and it provides enough for new clothes and food. We understand that hunting out of season is illegal, but we are paid under the table, and the butcher relies on us for meat, so he doesn't tell the authorities about our profession. The other children and I still attend school in Clare, or at least we did until the virus started coming around, and I just finished my sophomore year. Now that school has been out, I have been learning how to hunt large game, such as elk and bears. I've been deer hunting for the last few years, and I'm a pretty good shot with a rifle. But elk are much harder to kill than deers, and bears are the most dangerous predator on the mountain, or so I thought. On Tuesday morning, it was probably about 5 in the morning, I decided that I was ready to go out on my first solo hunt. I had heard coyotes in the area the past few nights, but they were especially loud that night, as though they were getting closer. I left a note on my bed, just telling my mother what I was up to, and that I would be back by midday. I will admit, hunting coyotes alone is a bad idea, but I knew that I could handle it. I am one of the best shots we have, and I've been hunting for years now. Nothing could have prepared me for what I was about to encounter. As I was sitting in my blind, waiting for coyotes, I heard a branch snap to my left, followed by rustling leaves. I was confused for a couple of reasons. It sounded as if someone just stood up and started walking. It definitely wasn't an animal. My first thought was a hiker, but it was only 6.30 in the morning and there was no camp set up. I looked in that direction through my scope and was greeted with the most horrific sight that I've ever seen. A man was standing there looking straight at me, smiling. Not just a grin, but a wide, toothy smile that made me freeze up. He was completely bald, over six feet tall, probably weighed about 240 pounds of pure muscle. You're a little young to be out here alone, aren't you? I don't respond. I can't respond. I can't do anything. I can't move. All I can do is stare at the horrifying smile, and then I notice the handgun in his waistband. I look back at his face, and the psychotic look in his red bloodshot eyes sent shivers down my spine. I suddenly realized that this was a life or death situation. Kill or be killed. Me or him. So I fired. The round soared two feet above his head. As I remembered my rifle was sighted in for long range shooting, I quickly chambered another round and looked back through my scope. Nothing. He was gone. I began scanning the area through my scope, thinking maybe he had run off. After my third sweep, I concluded he wasn't in the area. No obvious displacement of leaves could be seen, and I could hear nothing. God damn it, I muttered under my breath. That's when the laughing started. The evil, maniacal laughing. And the most disturbing part is that it was coming from right behind me. I heard the hammer of a revolver being pulled back, barely audible over the cackling. I slowly turned around 
And just as I saw the man standing right there, in my blind with me, he pulled the trigger, and the bullet went tearing through my shoulder. As I fell to the ground, my rifle fell outside my blind. I was defenseless. The man stopped laughing. You were prepared to kill me, weren't you? Answer me. His smile was gone now, replaced by a look of pure malice and hatred. But one glance into his eyes revealed the same psychotic look. I didn't mean to- Bull. You pulled the trigger. That was the last mistake, kid. And with that, he shot me again, this time in my stomach. As I was slowly fading out of consciousness, I noticed the tattoo on his forearm. It was a cracked skull with a snake coiled around it. Before passing out, I got one last look at the man's eyes. Those damn eyes. I awoke back in my bed. At first, I thought I'd been dreaming. Then I realized the overwhelming amount of pain I was experiencing was abnormal, and I remembered what had happened. My mother was waiting by my bedside and instructed me to stay still. She informed me that John, Charles, Alex, and Frank had all been out searching for me after they heard the shots and had brought me back just in time to clean my wounds. The bullets traveled straight through me and hadn't touched any vital organs, and therefore, she was able to stitch me back up herself. Three hours later, at about eight on Wednesday night, my grandpa came and questioned me about what happened. I told him everything and gave him a rough description of the man. At the time, I couldn't remember what specific tattoo the man had, so I just told my grandpa that he had a black tattoo on his right forearm. After that, I went back to sleep. Thursday morning, my mom told me that the men had all gone out looking for my attacker. There were seven in total. It was John, Charles, Alex, and Frank. And the latter three had sons that went along. That night, only four of them returned. And they were carrying four bodies. Charles had been killed, as well as Alex and Frank's sons. My mother took me outside, and some of the other women started digging graves while mourning their losses. The hunting party had come across a small camp about six miles into the woods, and as they approached, the man opened fire with a handgun, killing the three, before John shot him clean through the head. That explains the fourth body. Is this the bastard? Asked Alex. Is this the bastard who shot you? I started examining the body. I couldn't identify the man by his face, as my grandpa almost took his head clean off. He must have used the bear rifle. This man was still extraordinarily tall, even without his head. He was also built like a truck. Different clothes but that doesn't mean anything. And then I saw the tattoo, a cracked skull with a scorpion on the side of it, not a snake. My heart dropped as I realized that they had got the wrong guy. I almost fell to my knees when I realized that not only did they not get my attacker, but that the tattoo was clearly a symbol, implying that my attacker is part of a group and he's still alive. Those psychotic, malice-filled eyes are still out there. I didn't have the heart to tell them no.